Okay, so we are in uh, Coswell Inference in Statistics, this book right here. Uh, and we are now on question 1.37. 1. 1. Okay, and so this is a multi-part question. Um, so we'll tackle them one at a time. But, uh, but they all are founded on this game that is being played. Okay, so there's two fair coins that are being flipped uh, at the same time. And, uh, and there's two players playing, right? And so uh, every time uh, that at least one of the coins lands on heads, player one earns a dollar. Now, player two only earns a dollar if both coins land on the same face, okay? So either head, head, or tail, tail. Um, and so we're gonna, throughout all of this, we're gonna let X stand for the, the payoff for player one, which again, earns a, uh, earns a dollar. Uh, every time uh, at least one of the coins is heads, uh, and Y stand for the payoff of player two, which again earns a dollar whenever both coins are the same face, either heads, heads, or tails, tails. Okay, um, and so now we'll go through parts A and uh, A through E, um, and each each of those has several parts as well, so it's kind of a long question. Um, but uh, but to begin with, um, I just want to uh, make a table here that kind of puts uh, puts all of the facts of the game uh, out in the open here, okay? So in the first two columns, we have coin one and coin two, and they can be either heads or tails, okay? And then we see the payoffs for player one and player two. And so you'll notice that player one gets a $1 payoff whenever at least one of the coins is heads. So one of the coins is heads, one of the coins is heads, one of the coins is heads. And only when both coins are tails does player one not earn a dollar. Now player two, again, Whenever the two coins are the same face, then player two earns a dollar. And so that only happens when there's heads, heads, or tails, tails. If they don't match up, head, tails, or tails, heads, player two earns nothing. Okay. So um, for part A, uh, we are asked to find the probability uh, of X, <laughs> uh, the probability of Y, and the probability of uh, the joint probability of x and y, and then the conditional probabilities y given x and x given y, okay? So um, so this is just a lot of computation here, so maybe we'll just walk through a few, but the way that we're going to do this is, okay, so if I want to know the probability of x, so I, so I want the probability that x equals little x, where little x can either be 1 or 0. Well, all I need to do is go up here to the table, and I say, okay, um, what's the probability that x equals 1? So then I go, I say 1, 2, 3. There's three ones out of four total rows. So the probability is 3 fourths. Okay, now similarly, what's the probability that x equals 0? Well, there's only one instance in which x equals, or x uh, is 0. Okay, so 1 out of 4. Okay, and I can do the same thing for probability of y. Okay, now joint probabilities are a little bit different. So now we're looking at um, the probability that x equals x and y equals y at the same time, right? So that can be x equals 0 and y equals 0 at the same time, or x equals 0 and, one equal, and y equals 1 at the same time, or x equals 1 and y equals 0 at the same time, and so on and so forth, okay? So again, all that we need to do is we need to look at our, uh, at our joint probability statement. So if I take the probability that x equals 0 and y equals 0, well, then I just need to come up here and look for a row in which they both equal zero, okay? So uh, so this is the only time, so row four, tails, tails, is the only time that player one earns a zero. But during that, player two earns a one. So the probability of x equals zero and y equals zero is zero, okay? And then let's just pick another example here. So, uh, so probability that x equals one and y equals zero. So again, I need to come up here and look for instances where x equals 1 and y equals 0. So when does x equal 1? Well, it equals 1 in the first three rows here. And of those rows, when, is, when, is it, uh, when does y equal 0? Well, two of those, right? So we have two out of a total of four rows here uh, meet our criteria. And so the probability is 2 of 4 or 1, one half. Okay. And then finally, we have two different conditional probabilities, okay? So, um, so let's just take this bottom row here. So the probability that x equals a particular value given that y equals a particular value, okay? 
So, um, so let's take uh, let's take the second one here. Okay. So the probability that x equals zero given that y equals one. So in order to uh, in order to do this with our table, I need to uh, I need to go to the rows in which y equals one because I, I'm saying given that I already know y equals one, what is the probability that x equals zero? So I need to go to the entries in which y equals one. So I have when it's heads heads or tails tails. Okay, that's when y equals one. And of those instances, of those two instances, when does x equals zero? Well, it only equals zero when it's tails tails. Okay. So now we have two instances, not four, because we're again we're conditioning on only the cases where y equals one. And we and of those instances, x only equals zero one half of the time. And so you can you can kind of walk through all of the math here um, and kind of uh, well solve along <laughs> solve along with with my work there. Okay. So um, now uh, in part B we are doing something kind of similar in which we're using these probabilities that we just found in A, but now we're calculating expectations, variances, covariances, and correlation. Okay. So um, so let's just start uh, with the expectation of x. Okay, so this is uh, if I one way to think about this is if I played a hundred games or infinite games or a big number of games, how much do I expect to? Uh, how hmm, how do I want to say this? On any one of those tosses, how much do I expect to earn over many tosses of these coins? Okay, so the uh, the way that we do this, so expectation of x is um, is I'm taking a sum, okay, so that's what this big, this capital sigma means, sum, where x, of the instances where x equals zero all the way up to where x equals one, okay, of the value of x, so, so here I'm substituting zero for one iteration and then one for one iteration, okay, so, uh, so the value times the probability that x attains that value, okay, so, uh, so let's do this. So, so we can have that x equals zero. Okay. So, so I want the probability that x equals zero times the value of zero, times the probability that x equals one times the value of one. So now, if I go through here, so the probability that x equals zero is one fourth, right? And I know that from up here, right? X equals zero one fourth of the time, times zero, the value of zero, plus three-fourths, which is the probability that x equals one, which again I can find from this table up here, okay, times the value one. And so then when I take zero times one-fourth plus one times three-fourths, I come out with three-fourths, and that's the expectation of x. Okay, so you can do the same for y. And now we have, so, and I won't, I won't walk through y, but now we're asked to find the expectation of y when we account for x, okay? So, so this is a conditional expectation. So it's like asking um, if you're considering. Uh, so, so I could ask, what is the expectation of y over many over many tosses? But I could say, well, what do you expect y to be if you know what x is? I guess is maybe one way to say that. Okay. So, um, so similarly to what we did ahead of, or earlier right, with the expectation of x or, or expectation of y, if you've gone through that, um, I, I just take the sum of, I just take the sum of a probability times a value, okay? Well, now the probability is no longer the probability of x or, or probability of y. It's the conditional probability of y given x multiplied by that value of y, okay? And so you can go through and you can break this down similarly to how we did for the expectation of x, okay? Right, so so we have we have the expectation of y given or the the probability that y equals zero get, given that x equals zero times y equals zero. Okay, and just do that for every combination of x and y being zero or one, and you should come out with one and a third. Okay, and uh, the the next part is identical except for we're switching the positions of x and y, so we won't go through that. Okay, but now we have the variance of x. Okay, so now the variance of x is also an expectation, right? So we had an expectation of x, okay? And now we have the expectation of x minus 
the mean value of x squared. Okay, but it's still an expectation here, an expectation of all of this inside. And so the formula for, uh, for variance or the way that we go about solving it is going to look similar to how we solved for the expectation of x or the conditional expectation of y given x or whatever. Okay, so, um, so all we need to do is to start filling these things in. Okay, so, um, so the, the first thing that I do here is I'm just going to, so I know that the expectation of x is 3 fourths because we already found that. Okay, so I'm just going to plug that in here, right? So now my variance, the variance of x becomes this expression here. Okay, and so now I just need to break down the expectation again according to the probabilities and uh, well, so, uh, well, you'll see how it happens here. So, um, just like in the expectation for x, I had the the probability that x takes on a particular value multiplied by the value, okay? So, now I have the probability that x equals x times the value, but now that value is not x, it's, it's x minus the mean of x squared, okay? So, I do that for x equals 0, which is 0 minus 3 4 squared, right? And then x equals 1, 1 minus 3 4 squared, okay? And if you break all of that down, you should come down to a variance of 3 16 okay? Now, the next thing we do is calculate the variance of y, and you can do the exact same thing, and so I won't go step by step here, okay? Um, but then we need to calculate the covariance of x and y, okay? So now the covariance of x and y is, again, an expectation of a big term in the middle here. Okay, well, now that big term in the middle is considering both x and y. So if you look at the variance for x or the variance of y, we have x minus the expectation of x, or just call it the mean of x, or we squared, or the expectation of, or uh, y minus the expectation of y squared. So if I were to break out this term right here, well, then I would just have y minus the, the mean of y times y minus the mean of y, right? I, I would just expand that out and it would be two parenthetical terms. And so, so when with covariance, instead of having the having x minus the mean of x squared or y minus the mean of y squared, I just lay out x minus the mean of x times y minus the mean of y, okay? Um, so hopefully that makes sense. Again, whereas when we're taking the variance, we're just squaring that term, which is the same as having two of these parenthetical terms. But with the covariance, we, uh, we have one parenthetical term for each variable that we're considering the covariance of. Okay. So, um, so again, we just have, the, now we have the expectation that x minus its mean, y minus its mean. Okay. And just like when we were looking for the for uh, like the joint probabilities or anything like that, um, we we consider the joint probability of x and y over all values of, of y and all values of x times the things the, the value which is x minus the mean of x y minus the mean of y. Okay, and so we come out with these expressions, and again we are uh, we are oh did I just duplicate that? Hmm. Yeah, this and this line are identical. Okay, but when I, so when I expand this out, okay, I have the joint probability of x equals zero, y equals zero, times the value of x, which is zero minus its mean, <clears throat> and y equals zero minus its mean, plus, and then I look for the probability of zero and one, and do the same thing, one and zero, one and one. And when you break all of that, or when you break all that down, solve, you should have covariance of negative one eight. Right? So in other words, as, <clears throat> as x goes up, y goes down a little bit. Okay. So now, finally, the correlation coefficient, rho, is just the covariance of x and y divided by the product of the square root of the variance of x and the square root of the variance of y. And we've solved for all of these terms, and so you can just plug the values in that we already found, and we find that the correlation between x and y is just negative 1 over the square root of 3. Okay, so the correlation then is just a normalized covariance. Okay, all right, <clears throat> that's, that's the bulk of the long stuff. Okay, so now part C is given that player 2 won a dollar, 
what is your best guess for player one's payoff? Okay. Well, now, so this is a, this is a conditional expectation, right? So it's going to be a, a formula similar to what we have up here, but now we have a particular value for y. Okay. So we have a particular value for y uh, right here, which is y equals one. So I need to know what is. So I need to take the sum of the value of x. Okay which is going to be zero or one times the conditional probability that X equals little X when Y equals one, right? So, uh, so, so we'll start with zero and then add when X equals one. Okay. So, uh, so when X equals zero, uh, the probability that X equals zero when Y equals one, well, that's one half. Okay. So again, we can go all the way back up here to our table. Okay. So when Y equals one, x equals zero one of those two times. So y equals one two times. And of those two times, x equals zero one time. So one half. Okay, and, and we'll just save some time. The When y equals one, x equals one one time. So both probabilities are one half. Okay, so we have zero times a half plus one times a half. So that's zero plus a half equals one half. So that's the expectation of x when y equals one. And so now we're, we're just gonna do the same thing in part D, but now we're looking for the payoff for y when x equals one. And so I'll let you go through that yourself, but it should come out to one third, okay? And now finally, um, are there any two events with x and y that are mutually independent? Okay, well, what are independent events? An independent event is when the joint probability x and y is equal to the product of their individual probabilities or marginal probabilities you might call these okay so when the joint probability equals the product of their individual probabilities then we say that x and y are independent and one way to denote independence is with this little perpendicular sign here okay? so um so all we need to do is just to find the 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 joint and individual and the product of the probabilities and so i've put that all here in a table right so uh, so when x equals zero, or so here's the payoff for x, here's the payoff for y, okay? Their joint, the joint probability of that combination of x and y, and then the product of those probabilities, okay? And then if the joint probability equals the product of probabilities, then we say that x is independent of y. And so we'll say true or false, okay? But we can just go through these. And, and I'll let you look at the math yourself, and, and hopefully I didn't make any mistakes, but we see that in no instance does the joint probability equal the, uh, the product of the probabilities. So, there is, so there's no events in which X and Y are, uh, are independent, and so all of these are false. Okay, that is it. Oh, this was a long one. Okay, uh, see you next time.